Ask the Lord to be with us as we open up this day eight. The great Father in heaven, I pray earnestly for your spirit to be here amongst us, to work within us, that the truth of you may be presented to us and that we may accept it, put it into our lives and, and live accordingly, that you will guide us and direct us to all truth. So I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We're on day eight, the Holy Spirit, the person, part two. The first sentence in yesterday's devotional, we learned there are several biblical statements about the Holy Spirit that indicate he is a person of the Godhead, not simply an influence. If you read this whole thing, which uh, I would hope that you did, it's all culminated in the last paragraph on page 26. It says, the Bible is very clear. The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the Godhead. He speaks as a teacher, personally directs the church, can be grieved, insulted, and tempted, and uses personal pronouns to refer to himself. You further emphasize the Holy Spirit's position in the Godhead. Jesus commanded that individuals be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, that seems pretty concrete, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I thought that it did, but they had a, a thing in the, in the uh, Canyon City Church uh, years ago. You muted yourself, or somebody muted you. Oh. Okay, there. now we're good. Okay, it happened, it was years ago at the uh, Adventist Church in Canyon City. A uh, uh, person... You did it again, Delbert. You're muting yourself. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. Oh, my computer has a mind of its own. Could be. So, anyway, it happened years ago in the Adventist Church in Canyon City, Colorado. A guy came in, started preaching that there wasn't a Holy Spirit, that it was just an influence uh, from God. And uh, there were several people that started believing that, and they formed their own little group. And, uh, uh, and that was pretty amazing because uh, a very spiritual good friend uh, of ours uh, turned into that group. And uh, I called her. She had moved. They had left the church. Uh, she had moved uh, up north. Uh, and uh, I wanted to talk to her about that. And so I got all of my texts together and, and pretty much what is written here. And I talked to her on the phone, and I talked to her for about an hour, hour and a half. And uh, she was never convinced that the Holy Spirit was nothing more than a spirit. And uh, uh, that was uh, uh, very unsettling to me that people could believe that after all of the texts that talk about the spirit, what the spirit is, what the spirit does. But then we have another group of Adventists that have come out and say that the tri the tribunal or the or the triology is the triology comes from the Catholic Church and mm -hmm. that we are following the Catholic Church by believing that. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of uh, I I guess when I when I bring this out I want everybody to know there are a lot of different uh, 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 people out there groups out there that believe a lot of different things. Uh, and, and you will someday probably be faced with You muted again yourself. <clears throat> huh? My computer just kind of doing its thing. I don't know. We're going to let you know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, that is uh, what my discussion is. Uh, what, we, what have we read here? We have read that... Uh, that he speaks as a teacher, that he personally directs the church, that he can be grieved, insulted, and tempted, and uses personal pronouns to refer to himself. 
as we read through this lesson, uh, are we all in agreement with that? Yes. Uh, the first the Holy is, Spirit identifies as a real uh, person. Hey. I say all this, but in my readings, uh, to try to discover again, again, Delbert. Again, Ellen G. White says that, and out reading Ellen G. White, she says that um, she does not say that the Holy Spirit is a real person. She says basically that it's not a matter of our uh, uh, salvation. Uh, and uh, and those questions will be answered when we get to heaven. What do you think about that? I think you well, haven't read tomorrow's lesson. Yeah, um, the Bible is the final authority. We know that, right? So uh, uh, we need to know that because we are Bible-believing Christians, and uh, that's where we stand. Now, uh, the Nicene um, Council, 320 or 300 and something, uh, they had the big discussion about uh, uh, the nature of God. And uh, we need to know that the Catholic Church, as we know it, did not exist until 560-something, 562, 3-something like that. Uh, so, you know, just to claim that that was the Catholic Church is wrong. Uh, the Church was very much uh, divided into seven different areas, seven different places, you know, uh, at the time. Uh, and uh, one of the biggest at the time, it's true, the Roman uh, church was getting its power and the Roman bishop more and more, but it didn't have the full power at that time. So it is wrong to say that that was a Roman church that did the decision about, you know, the Trinity, uh, to make the decision about Trinity. It was the church council. So that, that's about that. When it comes to the, uh, the, the personality of the Holy Spirit, Yes, the Bible does say very clearly, I mean, you know, that it is a person. Why would somebody be baptized in the, name of, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not a person? Okay. Um, and I mean, I, in my own thinking, in my own mind, I believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. I believe that the uh, that the the God head is or the God uh, in my thinking is uh, the Holy Spirit convicts us to pray to Jesus Christ because through His sacrifice and His death and His resurrection is our salvation. But uh, that that goes to God the Father. And uh, I think there was some discussion a little bit the other day that that kind of what is the uh, uh, what is the the uh, job of God the Father and why is he called why is he called Father? I mean, uh, yes, ma'am. I just want to backtrack what you were saying. I had run across that with Ellen uh, White. She said uh, in the in the Acts of Apostles, page 51 and 52, said, The nature of the Holy Spirit is a mystery. Men cannot explain it because the Lord has not revealed it to them. Men having fanciful views may bring together passages of Scripture and put a human construction on them, but the acceptance of those views will not strengthen the church. Regarding such mysteries, which are too deep for human understanding, silence is golden. And I was surprised when I read that. Mm. I think that what the only reason I brought this up is because of the fact that as a church, we will be at some day, we will be uh, uh, brought up in front of councils or in front of uh, different uh, higher up. Some very brilliant men were told that will strive to convince us uh, that we are wrong. And, uh, and we need to have all of these things uh, uh, so that we can uh, know uh, what our faith is and, and, and what, what we truly believe in, uh, you know. And so I, I think that uh, the workings of the Holy Spirit uh, are, are awesome because Jesus sent him 
to uh, to truly guide us into yeah. all truth. And and he sent us, he sent him to convict us of sin and 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 to get us right. The, the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit truly to me have one purpose, and that is to prepare a sinful nation so that they can live amongst unsinful beings. Tina, you want to say something? I just want to say that maybe um, Ellen White didn't um, hear about uh, the Holy Spirit yet at her time. And, and I think we need um, the support of the Holy Spirit towards the end days. Um, and uh, without him, um, I mean, without his guidance, uh, where will we be? Mm hmm You know, I do agree that, and we spoke about this during these nights, that uh, the whole uh, identity of the Godhead is, in some way, you know, clothed in mystery. Yes. We, we cannot unveil everything. We don't know everything, you know. And uh, as I said before, I'm you know, trying to divide them and... Uh, uh, this is what the Holy Spirit do. This is what the Son does. This is what the, uh, the the Father does. This is who the Father is. You know, and we're trying we're trying to yeah. explain everything. You know, uh, it they work together as we said before, and they are one. Now, what does that oneness mean? I I just said you know in one sentence, what does the oneness mean? I have books on that. You know that speak about the oneness of God. It is. The Godhead, it is just totally amazing, you know, when you look through the whole Bible and look, you know, how the oneness of God is, is um, existing, you know, and Ellen White is not against what the Bible says in any way or form. She's just saying, be careful. And that's what I'm also saying. Yeah. Be careful how you define, because you might get be wrong, because we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I think that is uh, that is very good. But we also, I mean, what we do know uh, about the God, the family God, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as, and as Jesus and I and my Father are one, uh, you know. But then they are then they are separate, uh, and we we recognize that as they are three individuals, but they have the same purpose and they have the same uh, love, the agape love. But let me ask you this, then. Has God ever made a decision without talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit? No. no. They are one. What the Father knows, knows the Son. What the Son knows, knows mm -hmm. the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And always round, you know, so. Well, Chapter 16 of the book of John. And verse 13 says, when Jesus talking to his disciples, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. And the next verse says, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So... The Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son all being one, they're all of one mind, and the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is speaking what the conglomerate decides. Mm -hmm. Yes. In one book, I read it, but I am not uh, sure right now which book that was. I would always think the Great Controversy, but I'm not positive. It is that uh, before the worlds were created and, and the God... Uh, uh, heads, uh, the God family, I might say, got together to decide if Jesus was going to come down here. Uh, uh, at first, uh, the one God, we call him God the Father, God Head, didn't want Jesus to do that. Uh, and, you know, and it took some convincing, my understanding is, of the three of them uh, before they came to a consensus that, okay, Jesus would come down here. 
Any comments on that? Yeah, I'd like for you to come up with a reference on that because I've never read that. Okay. I would like to see that. Okay. It was not a... Uh... <coughs> anyway, I, uh, I don't want to say anything that I don't have. <laughs> Mute himself again. You're Mr. muted. Marty. Go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, you know, that, that uh, basically uh, the Bible does say that uh, Jesus Christ uh, has been sacrificed from the beginning of the world. So, in other words, there was uh, a uh, consensus between them. Now, how did they get to that consensus? I read something similar to what you said, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know exactly where and what I would need to uh, look, but uh, it wasn't, uh, I don't think, it was in that uh, context, but um, bottom line is, you know, uh, the Godhead did have the, obviously, the, the agreement, you know, for our salvation, and that was full-hearted. How did they get to it? It is a mystery to some extent. We have some uh, revelation in the scriptures, and spiritual prophecy speaks about some details, but uh, as uh, we read before, and as you mentioned, not everything is for uh, good for our salvation, so some things are good to stay, I believe, even a mystery. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. I mean, we're told his thoughts are above our thoughts, his ways are above our ways. Uh, we can't, if we could completely uh, comprehend everything in the Bible, then we wouldn't need God. I mean, it is, uh, uh, you know, we would be as, as gods, is what, what a lot of them say. But God is uh, in his wisdom. Uh, uh, Jesus, in his wisdom, the Holy Spirit was here. The Holy Spirit has always been here, but never in the fullness that he was given when Jesus sent him. And, uh, and the reason that he sent him was what? I mean, if I stay, I can't, I can't send you the Holy Spirit. Why? Why couldn't Jesus send the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus was in flesh, and the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at one time. I think it was the plan of salvation that it had to be complete. Mm -hmm. Well, we ultimately know that there was a plan, and God had a plan, and God has a plan now in our lives. Uh, not willing that we accept it or not, uh, it would be uh, very, everyone would be a Christian if nothing bad ever happened. Maybe this is irrelevant to the topic, but it was in your lesson tonight, how the Holy Spirit prevented Paul from preaching in Asia. Mm -hmm. What what was the purpose there? I believe that uh, Dell is offline. Oh. Yeah, he has issues with his computer. But that's a good question I might attempt. Uh, you see, uh, God has his plans. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, he has sent uh, this angel, you know, that... <laughs> Uh, you know, came into the dream of Paul and told him, right, don't go this way, go that way, right? And, uh, and he had to go to Macedonia. He had to go to Greece uh, instead of staying in Asia because that was God's plan. And uh, if you are in God's hands, if you are submitted to him, you go where he sends you. Uh, God had different plans than Paul. Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what was what uh, traditionally do we recognize as um, the apostle of Christ that went to Asia? Say that again. Okay, Jesus told the disciples they were supposed to go throughout the whole world. And right. traditionally, we understand that each of the apostles went in, like in different directions or whatever. Um, 
And so my question is, do we know who actually went to Asia? Uh, it's, it seems to me that uh, Thomas was the one that went to India, mm -hmm. if I'm correct there. By so, tradition, yes. So, so who, who was it that went on into Asia if it wasn't Paul? Uh, you see, that's, that's a very good question, yes. Uh, since Paul spoke more languages than any of the rest of the disciples, I believe that was God's purpose for him to go and, uh, and visit, uh, I mean, go early to Greece because he was fluent in Greece. The disciples were fluent in Aramaic. You know, they were speaking Jewish, right? Aramaic. Right, but, is, but, yeah. but the, the uh, actions of Pentecost negates that thought because they, they were speaking sense. in tongues at, at Pentecost so they could yeah. do whatever the Holy Spirit put on them to do. Yeah, to, to some extent it does negate it, yes. But, we, you know, by tradition, and if you, we looked at the tradition, then, we know that, uh, for example, Paul, he ended up in Greece, he ended up in Rome, he ended up in, uh, in uh, Spain, for example. Uh, we have others. Uh, you mentioned Thomas. We, yes, the, by tradition. These are traditions. The Bible really don't uh, go into those details. Just to right. some things. I guess, I guess the, the tradition then concerns me is that something that is in um, political history? Oh, yeah. Well, we, we know that the Holy Spirit, uh, well, we know what happened in Jerusalem at the destruction when, the, when all of God's people left Jerusalem before it was destroyed, that they went throughout all different areas. Yes. And so it would be hard to try to pin down who went where and did what and where they ended up. Exactly. Uh, you know, because they were they were driven by the spirit. And uh and and not all of the disciples left Jerusalem. I mean not until after, you know, they died there, but I mean, Peter was there. Several of the disciples were there when Paul came back uh, to to present himself to them. Uh, and uh, I think that, uh, I mean, getting back to what our subject is, is the third person of the Godhead. Uh, uh, he personally directs the church. Uh, and... Uh, and Calvin, I, I say that he directs the church because I think of you, you and your lovely wife had no inclination to go where you are now. And yet there you are. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, and, and it, there are times when of our own, we have no plans to do something and suddenly our whole world is turned upside down and and uh, and we end up somewhere where God wants us to be, you know. So so what I need for y'all to do is to pray real hard that the Holy Spirit tells me what I'm supposed to do here, because <laughs> the little church that we go to is almost non-existent right now. The the two oh. gentlemen that actually open the church and keep it running have been sick for like the last three weeks, and and the church has been closed. Oh my. I'm still trying to get a key so I can keep the place open. Yep. We'll pray for you. You know, I think uh, <clears throat> my theory that I shared with the conference with Doug English, he thinks that small churches need to have contact with bigger churches so when anything happens, they, they've got somebody to rely on but definitely why won't he give you a key well the conference is the utah nevada conference and just as farmington is kind of an appendage to the rocky mountain conference the church i'm going to has a three church district and it's the same situation and every single one of these three churches is probably less than 70 members 
they still should let you open the church rather than have it not open. I think so too, but the this particular conference um, is does not operate like the Rocky Mountain Conference does. Can you start doing a home church? Well, that would be even more difficult, I think, because everybody that goes to the church there in Lone Pine drives at least 20 miles to get there. Check out and see who is lives in the central part of the uh, church family. Yeah, I, haven't even, I haven't even met probably three quarters of the people that are on the books as far as membership in the four months that we've been here. We'll pray for you. I appreciate that. Uh, I have a comment uh, going back to the Holy Spirit, our study okay. tonight, the Holy Spirit, a person. Yes. Uh, does, that, does the title tell us Holy Spirit? So uh, is, a, is there such a thing as a spirit person? Or can the spirit do all the things that uh, the person does? That's just something I wanted to throw out there. Holy Spirit, a person. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as a spirit person? I believe that what the writer is trying to say is that uh, the Holy Spirit is a being. Okay, I agree with that, yes. I think the I think the term the Holy Spirit has been something that we have adopted because that's the way it's referenced in the Bible and and our finite minds don't adjust to a person equaling a spirit. Mm -hmm. We are well, to make sense to me. I got to say several verses like um uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, the Word was God. And then uh, it's the Spirit that quickens, so it's the same the Spirit. The flesh profits not. The, so there's the, the Word, the words I speak unto you, they are Spirit, and they are life. So there's the Word uh, talk, is being talked about like a Spirit. And then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So when I put all those together, the Holy Spirit, a person, it was a person in Jesus, you know, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then, you know, I'm in you and you're in me. And, you know, all of a sudden God is letting the Holy Spirit live in us. You know, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you are the temple of God. So I have to put all of that together and, yeah, it makes sense to the person. <laughs> We're told that the wind bloweth where it will, and man cannot perceive where it goes and where it comes from, and so does the spirit. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in our uh, in our belief, I should say, uh, we believe that there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe that they are three distinct beings. We believe, though, that they all have the same purpose, the same mindset. They are all full of agape love, and their their whole care and purpose right now is to get us uh, to recognize them and allow them to work in us, to prepare <laughs> us for a place called heaven. Uh, you know that passage that you mentioned where uh, John 3, you hear this uh but uh, you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. It also says, but you do hear the sound of the, you know, like the, 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 there was a rushing wind that came in there uh, during Pentecost, but, but Jesus was saying, you, you don't know where it's coming, where it's going, but you hear it. And uh, I think that's what our minds should be conscious of it all, all the time. I, I've been trying to concentrate on it more uh, so that I'm ready to hear the voice uh, of the Lord when he talks to me. And I think that's what Isaiah is saying here. Your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way walk in, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. So each of the God three 
uh, triangle or however you want to put it, uh, has a distinct purpose, a distinct job uh, that they do. And uh, as Jesus never tried to do God's job, being one with God, uh, he said, I don't do anything except the Father tells me. And, uh, and the Spirit it comes to convict us of Jesus Christ, as he said to his, to his disciples before they left, you know, that they were going to get a comforter, someone that would be there with them to guide them. I, I think that, I mean, in my thinking, we spend a lot of our time and our, and our energy on, on the great tribulation, on uh, the sins uh, uh, of the world and, and, and on the desolation, on the destruction on uh, on us being tormented, on us being kicked out of our houses, on us not being able to buy or sell, but uh, we don't spend a lot of time on the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. That Jesus has promised to never leave us or forsake us, and He's told us that the Comforter will be there with us. And like you say, you know, turn here or turn there. If we are truly a turn, what does it say? I am the good shepherd and my sheep know my voice. Yep, that's another good one. Absolutely. You know, so we we are attuned to, uh, to the working of the Holy Spirit. I have read so much of Ellen G. White, and she is constantly talking about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, and how the Holy Spirit longs to guide us and direct us and giving up to the Spirit. So uh, these are things that the Spirit, that's his job, I, I guess I should say. I mean, I think he does it willingly. I think he does it lovingly because I think he cares for us like Jesus did and, and God does, you know. That, but they, they care for us as an heir. We are the spectacle of all the other universes, uh, they are looking at us and they are looking at our lives. And there's many of them in wonderment. The angels are in wonderment. Why don't these people see? Why don't they do? You know, uh, we have given, uh, as I was talking to somebody the other day that, uh, that says, well, if I go to heaven, I'll go. If I don't, I don't. That's not the way it is. We will choose. Mm-hmm. It is our choice. That's what God gave us. We can either accept or we can reject. That person already had chosen. Well, I would pray not. It's my older sister. You know, it's, it's interesting. I'm as, uh, as we are talking here, I'm just doing some words, uh, word study for myself and you and all of us. And um, it's very interesting, you know, that uh, in the Old Testament, uh, it's only twice use the, the, the expression Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Uh, it's, in, it's rather used like um, uh, the Spirit of God or the Spirit of the Father or something on those lines. So that's, that's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we have more of the use of the Holy Spirit, uh, Hagios Theoma. And uh, it's very interesting that in the Old Testament, when it's used, the Holy Spirit, it also can mean the spirit of holiness. So it can also mean that. So not just the Holy Spirit as a name, but also the spirit of holiness. So what means the spirit that brings you the image, uh, back the image of God. So I, that is, you know, something we should think about, you know, because we are talking about the nature of the Holy Spirit and and, you know, what is his purpose? What is his work? His job, somebody said. Uh, you know, he, I believe he has a tremendously important work, and it is to make us holy. I would, uh, we, we're going to need to uh, get to our prayer time. And